got to start the mo- <laughs> got to start the most important part. <laughs> we do. I got. I forgot to start the video. Start the video. All right. Start we the, need vi- the video. All right. Well, here we go. We have no video. <laughs> we can't see what we're doing. And now for something special. The unit is self-contained with its own saddler, farrier, wheelwright, and so on. It's a rigorous training dished on who know all there is to know about horses, and it brings results. We take you behind the scenes now to show just some of the interesting aspects of this training. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein, the best number one, or the number one podcast to create sound of horses from the ground up. Mike Stein is a registered journeyman farrier with an AP of one accreditation. On this week's show, a case study of a draft horse with laminitis, also talking terminology, breakover and breakover phase, and also the five phases of a horse's stride. All this and much, much more will be discussed here on Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. And over my far right side is Mike Stein. How are you? I'm doing good, Travis. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. You look good. You got a big smile on your face. You look like you're happy to be here. You look like the week's going well with you. And then, bam, daylight savings time comes in and screws up your sleep and everything. Well, now my clock's right in the truck. <laughs> what was it, right uh, once a year, twice a year or something like that? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. I just, I never change my clock because, well, it's there. <laughs> I still don't understand why we do the the whole timeshare. No, no, no. And how much do I have to pay you to say I look good? Uh, just keep doing what you're doing. I think uh, I think that covers it. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> it's, that's when, enough. it's when I start. It's when I say you're not looking good. It's it's like then, I'm kind of looking I, for a raise or looking, something. I get you. I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, my wife. Speaking of raise, my wife has Diego off the property. Uh, Diego is our mayor, four year old mayor. Uh, I'm sorry, four-year-old gelding who will be coming home at the end of this month. Right. And Diego, the other day, got a special treat that my wife thought I would like. He did. He got a special treatment. And I'm like, well, is it chiropractor? She's, she's like, no, he gets the chiropractor all the time. I said, is it that electroshock therapy, whatever that the one doctor does? Uh, no, 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 no. He gets that all the time. He stood on something called a theroplate. Yes. Yes, I know a theroplate. Now, now explain exactly what a theroplate is, if I'm saying that right. They, a theroplate is a plate. Right. Like you eat dinner out of. No, it's a, I think they're about maybe about four or six inches, about six inches tall. And my the, wife, my wife says it's about the length of a horse. It's two plates, two plates, uh, one length for front, one for back. And it's as, about two foot wide. And it's about the length of, of a, if you put them together, it's the length of a horse. Right. And Diego stood on it and it vibrates. Yes. That's so, it. I think, and, I, I've kind of laid out on one on a massage, uh, uh, a, uh, what do you call it? The yoga mat. So do you, do you find this at like sharper image or something like that? Have you seen them before? Or yes. Have I've, you, I've got I've got clients that have them in the barns. Now, my wife says because of my back that I should stand on it. Yes, and, you should. And it, uh, see, in my stand mind. Stand on it long enough, your legs feel like you're rubbery. They're rubbery when you walk After off. a while, though, that you start itching, wouldn't you, from all the vibrations and everything? That's fleas. Oh, <laughs> maybe you should take it, hose me out, hose me down in the washer rack while I'm standing on it. Poss- yeah, that's fleas. That's but, fleas. But I would think. My vertebrae, because we're vertebrae are straight up and down. That makes right. us different than horses. And horses' vertebrae are, are horizontal. I would think, yes, that would be fine for a horse horizontally. But for me to stand up and down, I could just see my everything packing together like sand in a bag. If I, I, think I the, One of the best things I've ever done talking about therapies, I've stood up on them. I've laid on the yoga mat. But uh, at someone who had a yoga chair. Or not a yoga chair, but zero gravity chair. Yes. Which, which I don't understand that because no matter what, you still got gravity. Right. You're not floating around. Right. A zero gravity chair on one, they kick that thing on. I got kicked back and that got comfortable and it was, it put you to sleep. They don't have a zero gravity chair for a horse, do they? I don't think they have one of them yet. No, okay. they're working on it. Well, they're working on. We're working on it. I'm, I'm, Special, you know. I'm working on something for you guys, our listeners out there. And don't forget, for every podcast we do, we have a matching video. Um, Mike's got a bunch of stuff to go over on this week's show, so make sure you run over to YouTube and you can watch the video of us, us here in the studio. Me waving to Mike. Mike waving to me. And he's got another hoof here in the studio. He's going to show you the actual phases of a horse's stride. Uh, we've got a bunch of pictures of Mike. Um, he. Uh, did a, a thing about a, nailing a piece of plywood to a horse's foot that had laminitis. So those pictures will be up here shortly. But here's what I got for you guys, our listeners. And the way you can get some free swag from us is go over to equinedynamics.com. 
Ask Mike a question. If we read it on the air, we'll send you out maybe one of these. You ready, Mike? Hold on. Okay. Let's see what we got today. All right. Aren't you something? You got... There you go. Open it up and show the camera. What do you got there? All right. <laughs> what do you got? T-shirts. Yes. And that's something. There you go. So I got a whole bag of them over here. I'm going to hand them to you. We might have a contest or something. The best, because there's only a, there's a handful of them in there. I think there's maybe 12 or 13 shirts. So maybe we'll have a contest where whoever comes up with the best question of the week uh, will send one out to them. So there you go, Mike. There's something else in there. Oh, there's probably like swag from the people I bought the shirts from. Oh, there you go. You can have that, Mike. That's all. <laughs> that right there is all yours. If you like hot sauce, I wouldn't give that to my worst enemy. That hot sauce right there tried this before yeah you can have it that's yours take it with you i do not want it if you call in with the best question you could get a bottle of hot sauce <laughs> not our hot sauce it's whoever bought the uh my sticker company guy your sticker company guy hot sauce yeah there you go all right guys stick around we got a big show to get into lots to talk about lots of pictures and actual demonstrations here in the studio so make sure you like subscribe to us over at youtube as well stick around you're listening to equine dynamics with mike stein he'll be right back well there you go mike you got it Wow, that's a surprise. Thank you. Let me see. I'll hold it up so you can see it. I think there's like four of them in there. Yeah. So, and they're 2X. So, I figured 2X would cover anybody that, you know, is on your route or anything. Right. And you can hand them out to whoever you want. But there's, okay. there's four in there. If you want to keep one for yourself, uh, whatever you want to do with them, I'll, I'll leave it up to you. Okay. But, and then that Stick hot, sauce. Mule hot sauce. <laughs> yeah, I've had their hot sauce. <laughs> Have you? Is it any good? It's good if you like their hot sauce. No, it's great. It's, it's 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 too sweet for me. Yeah, yeah. I kind of go for a more vinegary yeah. kind of. Uh, so there you go. You got the <laughs> sticker. But mule. some people really love it. Some people really love it. Everybody's got their own taste. Yes, this is true. All right. If hot sauce is hot enough that you can't taste anything at all but hot, then it's good, right? Yes. My uh, I actually was watching a video on on the famous TikTok and. They were showing how to make your own homemade hot sauce. And, of course, we're going to start the garden out here soon. Right. And I, I was all into it. You know, grind them, add the vinegar, the mustard, the pepper, the garlic, and all that stuff. And then you had to strain it. I'm like going, that's just – and then I'm just getting the juice out of it. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. Oh, come on. Try I might try it once. It seems like such a labor, though. Yes. Just to get – you know, I'd rather – you know, a bottle of hot sauce, what, two bucks? Yeah, I'll spend two bucks on a bottle of hot sauce. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. He was the official farrier of the 2018 World Equestrian Games. And don't forget, if you'd like to ask Mike Stein a question, and we'll answer it here right here on the air, go to equinedynamics.com, fill out that little form, make sure you put a return address, and if we use your question on the air, we'll send you out some free swag. And then let's say at the end of this month, the best question gets a free T-shirt. You want to do that? Let's do that. Okay. So as while they last, for the, for they the won't be around long. They won't for the People month. People will be fighting for them. For the month of March. Oh, excuse me. For the month of March, best question takes it all. And uh, over to my far inside is Mike Stein. How are you? I'm doing good, Travis. How are you? I'm doing good. So we're going to talk about a case study of a draft horse that we briefly touched on on last week's show. And you said something about you nailed a piece of plywood or, or a piece of a cabinet a countertop cabinet well we yeah it wasn't exactly nailed we'll show you here in a minute but you know this guy if you look at his hoof wall he's standing on his sole and there's not much left there well hold the on let me, let me switch cameras here so everyone can see we can all be friends we're going to camera we're not friends <laughs> we're going to camera six here all right so well, where's my picture here's your picture right there there it is okay so what are we looking at here it looks like this thing has been uh in a wood chipper this foot okay yeah pretty much the you know there's that's got white line it's laminitic he's flat on the ground on his sole there's no sole depth and if you look at that back foot and look at the height of that foot off the ground now he's a draft horse so he's hairy and the other problem with this guy was well he was heavy and he couldn't stand on his feet so we had to figure out a way quickly to get him out of trouble and since this is a great big foot and i'm looking at what my truck stocked for it's like okay we got to do something, right? Now, have you done anything to this foot as we see it right now, or this is how you yes, showed I've, up? I've removed 
some of the outside of the foot. This is not the a picture of the foot until after I had worked on it because I didn't think on it, about it until after. But you can see where I've trimmed off some of the big flare. And most of the hoof oil was not hitting the ground. And you can see the area where it was undermined. That See that dark on the other side away from it there? Uh -huh. Okay, that was separated all the way up. So I removed that. And there was a lot of separation under there and cleaned it up some. And around the edges of the wall, there's a lot of separation. So structurally, that foot's not going to hold anything as far as like nailing or screwing through the wall itself. The wall's just not not going to not going to do it. All right. So this it looks like this looks like a pie plate. Sometimes <laughs> it is. It is. Sometimes you just got to run with what you brought to the track. And that day we didn't bring much. So that you trace this foot out out of a. There is a piece of some cabinet top, and. You know, I was looking around. What do we have? He had some old cabinet top. And uh, so we got the foot on it, did a quick trace around. I put some screws into the cabinet top, and you'll see in a minute. I, and I ground down under. See where the bottom, it's all ground out there? Yeah, right yeah, here, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's dipped down under the area where the sole is dropped. And then in the back, I drilled some holes in it because I'm a, I'm, I'm put, going to put some impression material in there, fill in around the frog. We're going to load it up with a bunch of stuff to kill all the cr creepy critters that are living in that foot. And we're going to set the foot on there, you know, get the foot up, get it down, set it on there, and uh, make my impression, get, get the foot back up, clear everything to where we don't have anything under you know, under the foot where we don't want anything to be. Look at all these screws. These are regular deck screws that those you buy deck screws. from Home Depot. De Home Depot. Now, I don't, those, may, those may have come from uh, the local hardware. They may have come from Lowe's or whatever might be. Now, this is the other side of that foot that this we were the other side. All right. So here's, this is the, this is going to be hitting the ground, I'm right? Set, I'm a, no, no, that's going to be against his foot. Okay. So this is against his foot and this is what's going to be hitting the ground. That's what's going to be hitting the ground. Okay. And. You know, put some break over in it a little bit. And big thing with this guy is we're just getting him off the ground. And we're getting some support under him. And we're getting the foot out of out of a bind. You know, he's standing on his coffin bone, basically. And we do not like horses standing on their coffin bones. Mm -mm. That, that's, that's painful. And it will start eroding away. You can get chips to the coffin bone, a lot of abscess. And apparently it, it had a lot of abscess and for obvious reasons. Okay, there's what the bottom of the foot looks like. Now, this is you've got the horse's hoof up into your hand. Up in the hand. And this, it, it, this I'm assuming this is blood. For this, is just from, this is just from wiping off the bottom of the foot, basically. It was that thin. Mm. And, uh, I mean, it's that, that was hitting the wire, you know, basically just starting to brush stuff off and we got blood. There wasn't. Now, is this the coffin bone here? No, no, that's the, that's either side of the frog. Okay. And, uh, sorry, that, that's, that's what I meant. The frog. Right. That's the frog in the center there. And it's, it's flattened to nothing. And the hills were collapsed under. So I took them off and everything forward is off the ground. Really? I mean, you look at that. That's not, there's no hoof wall. He's standing on a nub. Now, how did he get to this situation, this this predicament right now? Well, he had been laminitic for a while. And the only thing we can do with this foot is get, get him up and down real fast. We hadn't got but seconds. Get him in there, get him down. And that's part of why I opted to go with, well, you got to run with what you brought to the track, right? Right. Now, now you've got, looks like a tapioca pudding and uh, the piece of plywood or the cabinet deck. Right, and you can see that it's on his foot. It's on his foot. We got it rocked back onto that base with where we trimmed the heels back. So the front of the foot is clear of the board, and we've glued it at this point. And we've got the, the impression materials under there. It's been trimmed out, so we don't have any pressure up there around that coffin bone at all. And, you know, we put the deck screws into the board, and, we, and you can see the deck screws a little bit there. This is not for a showpiece. Right. This, this is a heal to be pretty. Yeah. This is a healing piece. This is a we're in a bind and we got to do something for this guy. Some days you just got to figure something out. And so we glued. This is like the the super fast fold build. Uh, there's several companies that come out with this material at this point. At this at this point, the only about the point, only company that had this was probably Equithane was the only one on the market. Now, it, will this harden this tapioca pudding stuff on the side? This is hardened. Yes, that hardens pretty quick. And if you go back to that back shot, you can see a little bit of the, the in, dental impression material that squeezed out the back, the, the red back there. Oh, oh, I see it back here. Okay, yes. that's up under the back of the foot. And with everything, 
you know, we got a piece of shop rag in there at the moment when we took this picture. So at this point, we can uh, medicate some galls, mix up some sugar dine. Uh, if you on, on a foot like this, if you pack galls, roll galls are good because then you can ro- load it up with sugar dine and start stuffing it in from the front. And then you got one end of the roll galls, so you can grab the thing and pull it back out. So, we're, you know, if you want to medicate the bottom of that foot, you can pack it and then pull it back out and clean it. And because we don't want any more infection started up and we want to get this foot a chance to heal. Now, how long did he walk around like this? Well, we left him in this as long as it would hold together. So he was wearing these for about three months. Oh, really? That long? And kind of left the owner to pack the front of the foot. And, you know, owner was okay with that. Owner was okay with that. The, I think at this point, the owner had been working on the horse's feet himself mm. up to the, up to here and we're in trouble. So at that point, like I said, we got the shop rag parked, packed in there because we, I think we had a little bleeding at that point from, from just messing the foot around. We just put a little pressure on it. And I don't keep a, tr- at that point in history, I don't, didn't keep a truck stocked like I do now. And, uh, so it was, we had to figure out something quick. This guy actually lived a good many more years. I don't, you know, don't know that he ever rode again, but I, I don't think the plan was for him to, to ride and uh, gave this foot a chance to grow and heal up some and, and get him out of a bind. What, and, was, what was his job? Was his job? Eating stuff. Okay. <laughs> so he was a lawn ornament. He was a great big fella and he ate a lot of stuff. Uh, I think at one point he trail rode. Okay. Uh I don't know that he ever did much bat past this point. And at this point, I don't think the owner was really riding horses anymore anyway. But he lived for a good many more years and did okay. You know, I'd heard through the grapevine about, he, he, I think, eight, ten years later, he was he, you know, he ended up going down because of old age. Did, did his hoof recover, I guess? I guess I'm assuming 100% if he lived another eight to ten it, years. Well, there was a certain point where I didn't see him again. Okay. You know, I did, I, I saw this guy a couple times and the deal was, you know, as long as he was growing foot, the owner was trying doing their own trimming and they wanted to continue to do their own trimming. And so basically what it did was he lived with his cabinet top pieces on his foot and he walked through them. During that time, it gave him a chance to grow some soul. Well, good. Good and for this him. This is not. This is not purdy. It's not. You know, there's there's a lot of stuff. This was a long time back. There was a lot of stuff made out there, and when you come to these big horses, it's harder to find stuff pre-made. But it used to be when you pulled up somewhere, you better figure out something, and you better figure out a way to make it. And sometimes you gotta gotta pull a rabbit out of the hat, one way or another, and make something happen. And the clogs and stuff they sell now, they started off with pieces of plywood and such things. So evolution of the horse's uh, right. foot. So we, we got him happy. <laughs> well, good. He went out and he ate and did his thing. All right, guys, stick around. When we come back, we're going to talk terminology. Stick around. You're listening to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. He'll be right back. I got the, I got the hoof. I got the hoof. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yes. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. He was the 2017 American Eventing Championship Farrier. And don't forget, for every podcast, we do have a matching video. You can see all these great pictures and great demonstrations uh, that Mike has here in the studios. We've got cameras all the way around the board here, so you can see me waving to Mike, Mike waving to me, and how good Mike looks over there. <laughs> I must be paying you pretty good. <laughs> you do look good. Every time I see you, though, you know, for a man who does the, the work and – I've seen you out there. I mean, you you take care of our horses here on the property. Uh, usually at the end of the uh, end of your shift, because we're on your way back home. Right. And Mike, I mean, not for nothing. Sometimes you don't look good. I mean, you look like you are worn out by the time you get here. Well, sometimes this, you know, I I usually don't get to you till after an eight hour day anyway. Yeah, I know, and I feel so bad. You know, you're out there, and it's like because you're uh, supposed to work at least what. 12 hours a day. Minimum. Minimum 12 that's hours. that's part time because the day's 24 hours, right? That's right. <laughs> Sleep later. All right. We're going to talk terminology. So the first word we're going to talk about is breakover. And then the second term we're going to talk about is breakover phase. So what's the difference between the two? Well, what? Well, go ahead. Are you going to answer that? What's a breakover? You, you can, you can. I was going to read the definition that I have here on my handy dandy cheat sheet here. So breakover means when the foot or hoof rolls in. That's a rooster. Time to wake up. <laughs> All right. Breakover is when a hoof 
or foot rolls into the toe and leaves the ground or the action of the hoof as it leaves the ground. So that's what breakover means. Right. So uh, we're going to switch to camera two here. And Mike actually has a hoof. You can hear him banging on the uh, the table here. He actually has a hoof from a horse. He's going to demonstrate what an actual breakover is. So we'll go over to YouTube. Make sure you uh, watch this video. Make sure you like and subscribe. You can comment too as well. Uh, I answer the comments. And if I can't give you an answer, I'll send it over to Mike and here and answer your comment. Okay, when the breakover starts is the moment that the heel starts to leave the ground and it starts to roll forward. Okay. And, you know, when we're talking about whole lever arms and all this kind of stuff, a long, long-toed long horse versus a short-toed horse versus something where we've put some mechanics on it to move it back. So you do have some some ways you can alter how much tender press, tendon pressure they're dealing with that changes the movement all the way up through the shoulder. So breakover, does it refer to all four feet? All four feet, okay. fronts and hinds. And, uh, but it's the, the moment this is, we go here. Okay. That's the breakover. And actually, the true definition of breakover is, you know, when you're through sitting on your anvil, because you judge your anvil height by being able to prop on it. And each pack, pack of crackers and honey bun or moon pie or whatever your whatever your health food of the day is you're making me hungry mike because <laughs> you know you always try to eat healthy right? we, i try to at least yeah i gotta look good for the show That's i gotta right. i gotta keep up with you yeah the breakover phase starts from the hill starting to crack off the ground all the way through and goes into the foot coming through up through the swing into the swing phase. So that's the difference between all right. The breakover is the actual movement when the heel leaves the ground. That that and, instant is starting to break over. Okay, and then the breakover phase, by definition, is when the heel from, from the heel the, off of the toe all the way through the toe, coming off the ground and going into the swing phase. Okay, so why wouldn't they just call it all one word? Because it's like you have breakover and then breakover phase. So breakover is the actual. Is it a, is breakover the noun meaning it's that is the breakover over the shoe? Breakover phase would be the verb, the actual action when, of it. When you when you alter breakover a little bit with a rocker toe, roll toe, or even in in situations where you may go full to the foot or whatever you might do, that when Ferry's talking about breakover, they're t this is what they're talking about. How am affect how am I affecting this with what I'm doing? So, Mike, here's a question that I have for you. Now, for many years, I walked on concrete doing retail. Right. And my feet were just killing me, flat foot, whatever you want to call it, uh, plantar fasciitis. There is a thing where you can stand on a machine where you can stand on it. It can show you all the pressure points of where you're putting your pressure on, you know, where it's hot red here, nice and yellow here. If you were to see a horse walk in wet concrete, and all you see is that impression of that foot in the concrete. Can you tell if, if there's anything wrong with that horse's breakover or the breakover phase just by the impression that it would leave in like fresh concrete or some kind of – can you can you tell by that? You know, if you look back a few years, uh, when David Hood was down at Texas A&M, he was using a grid system that was showing on a computer screen exactly how the foot was loading as it was coming into the ground. Mm -hmm. And, and through the stride. And, uh, you know, they were looking at what was happening with, with the stride of the foot. They were, they were playing some games with it, and we got some discussion because of one particular horse they had on there where it was very, very uneven as far as the loading pattern. Feet were fairly convention, you know, fairly, ma fairly matched up. None of them are perfect. And, you know, off to the side, this was at one of the bluegrass laminitis symposiums back when they used to run that some few years back, 20 plus years ago. And I'll say that David Hood told me to contact him and talk to him because he was going to check out the horse a little further because I brought in, brought up something about shoulder set, how, how close the shoulders match. And he said, you know, maybe we need to look a little further. So I got to give him a lot of credit for that. And he was always interesting to talk to. But if you, if you saw an actual... Let's say the horse has walked through. I poured a brand new driveway. A horse has walked through it mm -hmm. and gone. The horse is gone. You horse don't see. Gone. You don't see the horse anymore. But you can see the actual prints that it left. Can you tell by those prints that it left if it has a issue with its breakover? 
Or well, next time you pour some concrete, let's walk <laughs> Diego through it, and then let's start matching this up, okay? No, I'm going to walk one of the cheaper horses through it. I don't want to ruin Diego's feet. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, that is, that is possible for sure. Uh, I know when I was working back with Tony Gonzalez, we were tracking him in the sand. Uh, yeah, that would be out, another. Yeah, that would be. rake out the sand so you could make some measurements on stride length and all what all. And, you know, it was real cheap testing equipment to see how well you had the horse tracking out, how straight it was, because you could check in a trot, you could check your, your stride length against your diagonals. But so you can do that. That is, a, that is a way to, you know, once a horse has left whatever and you can look at its track, you can tell, yeah, this you, horse. You is, can tell some stuff, yes. Okay. That, that, I guess that's the answer to my question. <laughs> and if you want to run, run your horse through wet concrete after you, you have the guys come in and do all their hard work and walk your horse through it, that that's good with me because it's your place i'm going to stand on one of those thermal plates and then walk, <laughs> right. try to walk through wet concrete all right guys stick around we got a lot more to get into we're going to talk about the five stages of the horse's stride we got some pictures and stuff to show you as well so stick around you'll listen to equine dynamics with mike stein he'll be right back right oh, i shaved my mustache or all the little hairs that were there before are now tickling my nose hmm is it making your nose tickle now? It is now. <laughs> Watching me do it. But that's fleas. Do you like my beard? Do you like the... It looks... You look good, Travis. I got to hide this big fat chin of mine. But this, the, my shirt makes me look slimmer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say something that those shirts also make you look slimmer. You know, you look really slim and trim on radio. I do. <laughs> I'm, I'm a hot looking... I'm a regular Brad Pitt. Mm -hmm. Don't worry video. about... Don't worry about... No one's going to get you for copyright, Mike. Don't worry. Okay. Who's afraid? You or the missus? Yes. <laughs> She's afraid I'm afraid. I think I can't on you anyway. I'll take it. I'll Even take when it. It doesn't involve you. I got fake passports and everything. Nice. <laughs> I'll leave the country if I have to. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yep. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. He is now a licensed thoroughbred farrier through the Kentucky Horse Racing Commission. And don't forget, if you'd like to ask Mike Stein a question uh, over there, you all you have to do is go to equinedynamics.com, fill out that little form at the top of the page, uh, put your question in there, make sure you put a return address and the best question of the month of March. We'll send you out one of these actual uh, Equine Dynamics t-shirts. Mike, hold that up again for the camera, for the folks on TV. Hold that up. And these shirts are guaranteed to actually make you look slimmer. That's upside down, Mike. <laughs> well, I was doing that for the, my friends in Australia. So there you go. Yeah. Oh, it's backwards there. But anyways, so these shirts are guaranteed to make you look slimmer. They'll uh, they'll attract attention and all that stuff. So get your questions in. And if you'd like Mike Stein to perform a clinic out at your location, you can do that as well over at the equinedynamics.com. Uh, fill out the form that says clinics, and Mike will come out to your location and your event. Um, you ever done work with like children doing events? I was thinking about that the other day. Have you gone out to like elementary schools or middle middle uh, schools or junior high, whatever they call it now, and done a, 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 a demonstration for kids? It's been years, but yes, I have. Because um, I think I think kids would just eat that up, especially because you've got that big uh, skeleton of Dolly, which is a huge horse. Well, it, it's a miniature horse, but still, it's a skeleton of a horse. Well, it's a medium pony. It's a medium bigger pony. than a miniature horse, smaller than. Diego, <laughs> yep. and we can make hoof prints, well, actually coffin bone prints in your concrete. So all your principals and, and, and lecturers out there would like Mike, Mike Stein to come out and perform a, a clinic at your location. Fill that out as well. And over to my far inside, you just heard that is Mike Stein. Hello, Travis. <laughs> Hello. You're looking good. I look good now, don't I, right? You do. Oh, now I owe you money. Nice. So now we're going to talk about the five phases of the horse's stride. And I've got uh, some drawings here. So now's a great chance to go over to YouTube channel. You can see this as well. Phase one is landing or impact. Phase two, loading or support. Phase three, the thrust. Phase four is the breakover phase that we talked about in ter talking terminology. And also phase five is the swing phase. So let me switch to camera six and we can see this. Um, where is it at? Where did I got it? Did I lose it already? Mm. I'll open it up again. Here we go. Okay. All right. So yeah, here we go. So phase one. The leg is swinging through the air. This leg right here. This leg right here. We're actually, both legs. One's about to make impact. One of them's not. The horse is galloping. And, you know, if you want to get real nit nitpicky, there's a, in the swing phase, there's flexion and then there's extension. And then there, and how the shoulder is moving, if it's free, uh, definitely affects that. And, you know, we always talk about the horse's feet landing flat. When that ho horse is in flight, the conformation of the leg makes a difference on how that foot lands. 
And also, you know, I've had people, my horse is doing a pee off, which is basically a trot in place and it's not landing hill first. Well, tighter collection versus extension. Uh, you look at a race horse at a full stretched out gallop and how that foot lands. If they land toe first, they're going to cut a flip. If you got a horse that is doing a, you know, in place, like a pogo stick, like a pogo stick, it, the mechanically the foot can't land, but where but where the body will allow it to. And you know, from a walk to a trot to a canter, from a, you know, from from a collected trot to extended trot, there's going to be some difference on the way that foot hits. And you were talking about your concrete a minute ago. You want to pay attention when the horse comes into the barn. And they hit the concrete. And any time is the way that foot sounds when it hits the concrete. Like a slap. Like a slap, like a solid hit. Like, is he hitting heavier on one side? All that's going to, information is going to come to you real quick. Okay. And phase two is the impact or grounding phase of the front leg here. And this foot photo. comes in, you know, if he's extended out enough, should be hopefully he'll first. If you've got a shoulder that's locked up, it's going to be kind of hard for him to reach out there and get it heel first. If you don't have, you know, if your shoulder is tied up, up up high in the front, if your hind end is not coming through, it's going to be really hard for him to come in, come in and land hill first. So you got to have the horse up and round for him to do that. Then the horse is going to land, and you look at the the, the loading phase or, or, or propulsion or however you want to call it. You know, the horse has reached out. He's pulling, pulling, pulling. It comes under the shoulder. You're picking up all the load. When the horse lands, one thing I'm going to look at is the pasture drop. Because when it lands, it's going to hit the suspensories. And then as he comes through, the tendons are going to start picking up. And then he's going to start coming through. And then he's going to start into his breakover phase. And from there, back into the swing phase. And I think that is stumbling through the whole evolution of it. So the la the phase three is the loading or support phase. Load support phase. Now, this is just him standing there. This is not part of his stride, or is it? But when he's moving forward, as it comes under his shoulder, that leg will be in that position for, for a millisecond. Land, come through, and start into your breakover phase. And your breakover phase, as the foot comes up, it will it will swing <laughs> right out of the camera right out of the camera <laughs> right out of the camera and the leg will flex uh -huh. and it will move forward and, and then the, the thrust uh the thrust phase of the thrust. stride of the front leg part of the part of it is pulling part of it is pushing he, he comes forward and he's pull, pulling himself forward and we're looking at front legs if you got real good impulsion from the back end, he should be, be being pushed from behind. If you've got a horse that is dropped and really locked in the shoulder, he's going to be dragging himself forward. And you will see that. You, know, you can see that in a, in a standing horse in the way the muscles developed. Now, in all these phases that you're looking at, right. this, in, this is what you use to actually design the horse's shoe how you're going to care how you're going to trim that right. horse you're not just going up to the shoe picking up the shoe and go okay he needs some off of here needs some off of here like if i was to walk in a, a place and have i need a haircut and they would just cut my hair based on all right it just needs to be short here but no for a living i wear headphones you know i've got a, a you know whatever helmet on got beautiful hair thank you very much um but they don't know that i need you know i need it to be longer here because in the winter time when i'm hunting i need longer in the back and then i need it almost like a mullet see if i don't say mullet <laughs> They you should never, have a mullet. I should. But when you're deciding on how to trim a horse's foot, right. you're, you're watching the five stages before yeah. you even you know make trim one on a horse. There's, there's, there's a few things going on there. When a horse comes in for landing and you see how that pasture drops, okay, is the mechanical base where it should be under, under the center of the bone column? Do I need to... To, do I need to shift it back? If you've got the breakover too far behind, you can actually catch too early and shorten stride that way. The other thing is if you don't have it far enough back and that pastern hits the loads and you've got a really hard load pushing down on the pastern, and as far as it, it's always going to drop and, and re, re, rebound. If your rebound is too slow, sometimes I need to put bigger support on the back of the shoe. And then when he's, you know, if he's really dragging himself, then I need to start looking at breakover. If he's really laying on that front end and dragging himself, then I need to look at 
when I'm forging the shoe out, what do I do with breakover to help him get that leg flexing and moving where he's not dragging himself forward quite as much. If you got a horse that's really a strong pusher from behind, completely different critter as far as the way the front end works. And, you know, any is there again, it gets into that dropping the horse out or lifting the horse up. Horse is round, they move freer. If a horse is dropped, everything on the ground tries to collapse. And we keep going back to low palmer angle. The low palmer angle if you got a horse that's laying on the shoulder, it tries to drive that down. You're going to get a lot of compression in the pasture, and then your breakover is going to be dragging down and slower. I'm going to move it over here. Just no, no, I'll, 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 I'm trying. You're to... playing with the camera, and I don't make it dance around. <laughs> but you know, if if he's really laying on the front end, and I need to get this to break up faster, I can do that in the you know as far as altering my shoe. If you're playing with a rocker format. That horse may need the belly of his rocker further back because when he lands, if he's in a rocker format and he's collapsing over backwards, the horse that's laying on the front end hard will tend to push this way if you got that belly set too far forward. So I want him to come in and roll through. You know what I need? Not to get off topic, I need my wife's uh, Pivo camera to follow you around on the table with this thing where it would automatically and move. And then when and they stuff. back up, they go this way. <laughs> and then when they do, do right. the diagonals, they. Br- How's that? All right, guys, stick around. We got one more segment to get into, and we'll let you get back to enjoying your horses. Stick around. You're listening to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. He'll be right back. But yeah, that would have been perfect if I would have had my wife's Pivo. It would have just followed you back and forth as you were moving. Well, we need to start Pivoing in in the studio, right? Yeah, we need to have. <laughs> well, you know, once the we get enough sponsors and our our budget gets a little bigger, maybe we'll invest in a Pivo. Well, the I'll have the, my fifty person office staff research that. <laughs> your fifty people call my fifty people. That's right. <laughs> we learned. Don't trot your horse through wet concrete. We're not unless there. you're at Travis's house. <laughs> not yet. You can say that when we come back. You ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I just got a grunt. That's all I got. <laughs> Ready now. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein, the number one podcast to create sounder horses from the ground up. Mike Stein is a registered journeyman farrier with an APF1 accreditation. And don't forget, for every podcast we do, we have a matching video. Uh, you can see us over on YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe over there as well. And if you comment, I will answer you. If I cannot answer your questions or I don't get to you fast enough, Mike will also answer your comment over on the YouTube page. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you'd like to leave Mike a question, uh, this month we're giving away our, our very limited edition Equine Dynamics Mike Stein t-shirts. Uh, there are 2X, so don't be picky on the size. They're all 2X. Uh, and that's for the best question of the week. Make sure you get those in over at equinedynamics.com. And make sure you like and subscribe to Mike Stein over on Facebook as well. He, he, pus- he puts a bunch of different articles up there about horses and furthering your education on the equine world and over to my far inside is mike stein how are you i'm doing good travis how are you i'm doing all right so what do we learn today the case study that we had of the draft horse with laminitis and you use half of a half of the kitchen sink or something like that to fix yeah, his the, foot the kitchen cabinet they torn out because <laughs> sometimes you just got to figure out how to do something and you know some i, I don't like following up i mean having to chase stuff around but you know, we used to have to be a little more creative and stuff we built to put on horses' feet than what's out there now. You can order all kinds of stuff, and you can even order some things for draft horses, but at the time there wasn't. And we were right there, and something had to happen like right now. Now, how long, not to interrupt you, how long ago was this? You said that there's a lot more stuff out there now. How long ago was this uh, demonstration that you have with the, the countertop on the horse's foot, on the draft horse's foot? Mm. 10, 15 years, 20 years ago? I'm going to say 15-ish. Okay, so 15 years. So in 15 years' time, the evolution of the horse's foot or the fixing this for a horse has, has increased dramatically. Right. But, you know, if you don't have it with you and you got to do something, you got to figure something out, right? See what you got and use what you got. Uh, also, talking terminology, breakover and the breakover phase. The breakover and breakover phase. When you hear fairies, we talk about breakover a lot. Mm-hmm. So when that, that moment that foot starts to lift off the ground and the flexor muscle is taking over in movement and rolling through and coming off the ground, that's the full breakover phase. But that just that instant that lifting up. Is the breakover. Is the breakover. 
and the break over phase is all the way from the start of lift up till pushing all the way through and off the camera <laughs> and off the camera <laughs> there you go because if you're not on the camera no one's gonna it, see it nobody's gonna see it <laughs> And also, the five phases of a horse's stride. The landing, the loading, the thrust, the breakover phase, and the swing phase. Yeah. The, and, and why is it important to learn these phases? Why is it important to learn these phases? It's more important just to learn what you're looking at <laughs> and see the reaction. But, you know, the landing and loading is important because we need to think about support. The thrust, well, that... You know, as he's coming through and he's thrusting himself forward, and uh, as he goes into the breakover phase, we got to think about what we're doing on on leverage. Like Jack Miller said when I worked with him, the old, all the fairy can really do is provide support and reduce leverage. Actually, there's a lot of ways to do it, but that's what you think. Do I provide support or do I reduce leverage, and where do I do it? And getting that timing between the load and the breakover and how the foot reacts in the ground well, that's going to make a difference on how we prep a shoe. The ground condition is going to make a difference in how we prep a foot or, you know, prep a shoe. And before you even look at prepping the shoe for our, for our barefoot horses, have I got the mechanics of the foot in the right place? And you're going to see that now the foot reacts. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us. Oh, yes, and you're supposed to run it through Travis's concrete while it's wet. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right, and that'll help as well. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us for this week. And don't forget, make sure you go over to YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein over on YouTube. Uh, like and comment and do all the stuff that the influencers say out there. Uh, if you have any questions for Mike Stein, go over to Equine Dynamics. Ask him a question, best question of the week or best question of the month. We'll get a free T-shirt. We'll send that out to you. Make sure you put a return address. And if you'd like Mike to come out and perform a clinic at your location or event, fill out the clinic section over there as well on equinedynamics.com. As for that's going to do it for us. On behalf of Mike Stein over there, have a good day. We'll catch you down the road. <laughs> get out there and enjoy your horses. My Travis is pretty. <laughs> and my name is Travis saying, see you next week. All of the doggies are in the corral. There you go. All of your work is done. It's all warm and toasty over here. Yeah. You got a little, little heater for you over there. I love, I in Florida, I've never had a heater like that before in my life. You can turn it off if you want. Just turn everything to the left, I think. Um, living in Florida, never had those heaters before. Always right. had just a little small space heater because we'll get down to 50s at night. Right. Uh, here, you put that that radiator type heater in a in a bedroom and close the doors. It'll get toasted. Oh, yeah. my dad's got one in his bathroom because we don't run the heat in the house. I right. mean, we do, but we don't run it for him because he's got thin the uh, thin whatever. Thin blood. Yeah, because of his medicine.